Securing Oral and Nasal Endotracheal Tubes by Craig Smallwood. Healthcare workers in all healthcare settings should always adhere to the latest World Health Organization guidelines on hand hygiene and barrier precautions before and after contact with a patient, bodily fluids, or patient surroundings. For more information, please watch our video entitled Hand Hygiene. My name is Craig Smallwood. I'm a respiratory therapist here at Boston Children's Hospital. In just a few moments, I'm going to go over a few different ways how we can assess and resecure endotracheal tubes. But before we do so, I just want to review kind of why it's really important. The first reason is really obvious, to enhance safety. With properly secured endotracheal tubes, we can reduce the risk of accidental extubations, but we can also reduce the complications associated with long-term intubation. This can be anything from an endotracheal tube that's pinching a part of the skin, some mild irritation on the cheeks, or even severe breakdown of the facial tissue. Introduction Here at Boston Children's, we think it's very important to frequently assess the placement and adequacy of the tape job of all our artificial airways. We do so about four times a day, so every six hours as a minimum. We look at not only the exit marking on the ET tube, but we'll also double check that the patient has bilateral breast sounds, and we can also look at the most recent chest x-ray if applicable. Basically, we don't want to retape an endotracheal tube unless it needs to be retaped. If the tape job looks unsecure, has become loose, if the tape is soiled, or if we note skin breakdown, then it's time for us to make sure that we go in and retape and resecure that device to enhance safety. So once we've decided that we think that the endotracheal tube needs to be secured, we need to do a couple things. First, we'll need to reassess and make sure the placement of the tube is appropriate where it is. We can check the uh, endotracheal tube exit marking, either at the nair if it's a nasal endotracheal tube, or at the lip if it's an oral endotracheal tube. Next, we're going to need to gather our supplies and the uh, personnel that we're going to need to actually perform the procedure. Equipment and personnel. So now we're going to go over the supplies and the personnel that we're going to need to safely perform this procedure. First, we're going to need our safety equipment. We have our mask interface. If the endotracheal tube does come dislodged, we want to be able to manually resuscitate our patient and keep them safe. We have our manual resuscitation equipment, which can be a self-inflating bag or a flow and filling device as we have here. Next, we're going to need all the supplies to clean up the face. We have some saline and some gauze to wipe off any sweat or grime that's built up over time. Next, we have uh, some liquid that can help to protect the skin and also make the skin uh, stick to the tape a little bit better. For sensitive skin, we uh, like to use a, a barrier device, which we refer to as duoderm, that can kind of lay on the cheek in between the tape and the patient's skin to protect it as much as we can. Lastly, but most importantly, is the cloth tape that we're going to use to physically attach the endotracheal tube to the patient's face. I'm going to review with you three different methods for affixing endotracheal tubes in infants and children. I'm going to review two oral methods and one nasal. Before we do, I want to stress to you the importance of having the appropriate personnel at the bedside or readily available. You're going to need a person to physically do the retaping and one person to hold the breathing tube in place when the tape is off the face. You're also uh, want, going to want to consider having a physician or somebody who can intubate the child if the breathing tube comes to dislodge. This is especially important in patients with critical airways. Procedure Why Why Method I'm going to review the, the first oral method we refer to as the YY tape job. Um, another note on retaping endotracheal tubes, always make sure that you use standard precautions, that is hand washing and gloves, and then never put the, the tape on the face on a dirty surface. So in preparing the tape, I'm going to put one piece of tape on the surface and stick my prepared tape on it so it doesn't touch a dirty, face, a dirty surface before it touches the patient. You're going to want to measure out a, a piece of tape approximately mid-cheek to mid-cheek in length. I'm going to cut that off. And I'm going to make one slice down the middle of the tape job to about two inches maybe from the side. This makes our first Y. Do the same thing and prepare a second Y. Good length. Second Y. So I'm going to have a, an assistant come in here and hold the baby's head and the endotracheal tube. 
holding the head and the endotracheal tube ensures that if there are any patient movements, they'll be able to make sure that the, the tube doesn't come dislodged because the head's not moving as well. So again, we've verified the placement. It's in good place, so we're gonna tape this endotracheal tube right in the same position that it is now. And I'm gonna take off this tape job, prepare the skin, verify the position, and then do the tape job. Good communication is key between the person doing the retaping job and the person assisting. So I'm going to make sure that my assistant knows that he has total control of this endotracheal tube now because the tape is off the face. I have some gauze prepared with some normal saline and I'm just going to give the face a quick wipe, get rid of any sweat or grime that's built up over time. Another thing that we do um, when we're retaping on occasion is we'll move the endotracheal tube from one side of the mouth to the other. Doing so can uh, reduce the, the strain that's going to be put on the tissue. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. Verifying the position, we're still at an exit marking of 11, which is appropriate for this child. I'm going to apply the, uh, the skin protection and the, the, the liquid that will prepare and help the tape stick a little bit better. This will take some time to dry and make sure that you allow this, uh, this stuff to dry before you put the tape on, otherwise it won't stick. So keys to fixing the YY tape method with an oral tape job is to just to use like a little loop here on the tape. You can see how I prepared it and now I'm gonna lay this strip over top of the lip here and this one's gonna lay nice and snug in the corner of the mouth and the endotracheal tube is gonna be placed right in the crux of the Y. Going to move the pilot balloon out of the way. Another point to consider is to make sure that there's no pinching or pulling with your tape job. Any pinching or pulling is just going to make the tape job come off way quicker than you want it to. So you can see I have the, the endotracheal tube right at the corner of the mouth in the crux of the Y. And take this first piece of tape here that's unsecured, I'm going to wrap it around the endotracheal tube. The idea here is to just go right at the base of the tube. I'm going to put a little tab at the end, so when we have to retape, it'll be easy to get this off. That looks good. I'm going to take our second piece of tape, the second Y, and do the same thing. Go just a little bit higher with the second piece of tape, so I'm covering a little bit more skin. On the other side of the cheek here, I'm going to go just a little bit higher as well to cover some more skin and hopefully uh, make this a little bit more secure. Now the only difference between the, the first piece of tape and the second is that with the second, I'm going to wrap it up like a candy cane. You can see I'm coming all the way up the endotracheal tube. Same thing with a little tab. And we're done. Press it down, make sure everything is fine. You can double check um, visually to make sure that the exit marking is similar. We're gonna listen to breath sounds and make sure that we hear them bilaterally, and our job is done. Procedure, HY or YH method. I'm going to review with you our second uh, method for retaping oral endotracheal tubes. We refer to it as the YH method. I'm gonna show you how to prepare the tape. Again, measuring it a length from approximately mid-cheek to mid-cheek. I'm going to prepare the H. Cut a strip down to almost the middle. That's basically a Y. Go from the other side and do the exact same thing, leaving about a centimeter portion of tape in the middle. You can see our H. The second piece of tape we're going to need is the Y and it's exactly the same as the first method. Why? 
So we've prepared our tape, we've prepared the face, we've washed it down with some saline and some gauze, we've laid down our protective barrier, and now we're going to apply the tape. I'm going to start with the H piece of tape. I'm going to take this top part of the H here and lay it right across the top part of the lip. I want to put this little crux part right at this corner of the lip where the endotracheal tube is going to meet it. I'm going to make sure that the endotracheal tube is close, snug against the side of the lip, but not too tight. Again, we don't want any tugging or pulling. I'm going to take one side of the, the lower portion of the H. I'm going to wrap it around on an angle all the way up the endotracheal tube. Again, I'm going to put a little tab on the end so we can remove it easily later. I'm going to repeat the exact same procedure with the other side of the H in the other direction. Little tab. Looks good. I'm going to take our second piece of tape and I'm going to apply it in the exact same manner that we did in the YY tape job. On the top part of the lip with the crux just at the endotracheal tube. See if we can get a little bit more skin coverage on the top of the cheek here. Same with the other side. I'm going to go underneath the endotracheal tube and wrap it up as high as it'll go. With a little tab. Looks good. We're at the appropriate exit marking. We're going to listen to breast sounds and make sure we hear them bilaterally, and that's it. Procedure. Nasal taping method. I'm now going to review with you how to retape a nasal endotracheal tube. To prepare, we're going to need three pieces of tape, two Ys, a little bit different than the oral um, pieces that we prepared, and one just straight piece to add a little bit of additional security. Let's do that. The length of tape that we need for the nasal intubation is a little bit longer than the oral, but not much. So I'm going to prepare a Y similar to the one we did earlier, but I'm just going to leave less space from here to here. Another piece similar to the one we just did. The last piece is just going to be one straight piece of tape, so I'm just going to split this in half. You throw away this. It's one straight piece. So now we're going to secure this nasal endotracheal tube. We've already cleaned the face and prepared it for the skin. Now we're just going to lay down the tape to secure the tube. And take our first Y. I'm going to make a loop on the top portion to make it a little bit easier on myself. What I'm going to do with this, I'm going to lay the, the bottom portion of the tape here right across the top of the lip, all the way across. Now it's key with nasal intubations to start the tape on the opposite side of the nair that's intubated. So since we have a right nasal intubation here, you can see I'm starting the crux of the Y on the left side of the face. I want to cover the mouth. And I'm going to follow the contours of the nose, not to put too much pressure on anything. Important note, you don't want to tape the uh, pilot balloon if you don't have to. So I'm going to try to get this out of the way a little bit. Come in underneath the endotracheal tube, following the nose, and secure it on the tube. tab. With our second Y, we're going we're to come from the same side of the nose, 
but this time we're going to wrap with opposite sides of the tape. You can see how the second piece of tape now is securing the first part that's fixed to the endotracheal tube and kind of crosses down here over the cheek. Bottom portion comes over the lip and we're going to fix it to the endotracheal tube and wrap all the way up as far as the tape will take us. Make sure everything's as secure as it can be. Now we're going to take our last piece of tape we're just going to go right across the top portion of the lip here to make sure that the, uh, the part that we just laid down that went from the bottom onto the endotracheal tube has a little bit extra security. That looks pretty good. We're at the appropriate exit marking. We'll verify breast sounds and we're all done. That concludes our session on retaping nasal and oral endotracheal tubes. Thank you. Please help us improve the content by providing us with some feedback.